get later on can you maybe send me some of that stuff okay could you do that thing? oh yeah yeah because I, I can't see the way so i'm kind of you'll be quiet I want to thank you all uh, for joining us today. Uh, we're here today because we all know that Florida has never been more unaffordable, and Ron DeSantis is making it worse. We've been calling Ron's failures to do anything about skyrocketing rent, utilities, power bills, property insurance, the DeSantis tax. Today, we're shining a light on just how much the DeSantis tax is costing our fellow Floridians. Governor DeSantis recently proposed a $1.1 billion tax plan. Frankly, I think uh, Democrats wish he cared about the diaper tax before the election. But here's the reality we're facing. Ron's tax plan is a drop in the bucket compared to the new taxes and higher bills Floridians are paying every day. And so we ran the numbers to get a true handle on this. Because of this failed governor, Floridians have been forced to pay the following DeSantis tax. Number one, one billion DeSantis tax on online purchases. Number two, 1.56 billion DeSantis tax on gas tax since the start of the Ukraine war when we demanded relief. Number three, two billion dollars in DeSantis tax for Orange and Osceola counties over his attacks on Disney. Number four, seven billion dollar DeSantis tax on increased power bill expenses. And for 2022 alone, Florida homeowners are paying an additional $15 billion in property insurance, while renters are paying $25 billion of DeSantis tax. $50 billion in new DeSantis tax that Floridians are having to pay. $50 billion. Rent, property insurance, electricity, gas for your car. These aren't luxuries. These are things everyone is needing, needing and has to use. And he's responsible for the $50 billion in new descent taxes that we all owe. Rather than working to solve Florida's problems, Ron would rather fight culture wars to distract you from his failures. This governor doesn't care, to put it simply. He would rather spend your hard-earned taxpayer dollars to ship migrants across our country for a political stunt than address the astronomical cost increases that we've all had to bear. It's unconscionable and it's just plain wrong. Wrong Ron is not only inhumane, he's also selfish. He cares more about the White House than your house. And he'll make you pay whatever it costs to get him there. That's not the governor Floridians deserve. They deserve a governor who cares about the people, a governor that has a heart. I've been your governor before. And when I got elected, I held a special session and dropped your property insurance by 10%. This governor held a property insurance special session and your cost didn't lower at all. Zero, zilch, nada. It was a special session, all right special for the insurance companies and not the consumers. But not for you, the everyday working Floridian, just trying to make ends meet through all these DeSantis taxes, just trying to put food on the table, take care of your kids without breaking the bank. That's what it all comes down to. Do I pay my utility bill to keep the lights on or my medical bill to get my life-saving medication? <clears throat> Do I pay for my property insurance to keep a roof over my head during hurricane season or pay for my gas in order to drive to work. It is the sand tax that's the problem. And we're all feeling the burden of it. When Rod says one billion in tax cuts, you remember the 50 billion he's making you pay in the sand tax. Florida deserves a governor who actually does care. A governor who will work every day to make your life better, easier, and more affordable. I'll be that governor. 
Just the other day, I was walking through the airport and a guy came up to me and said, Charlie, I'm a Republican and I'm voting for you. Earlier this week, I was in Republican meeting Fort Myers and Charlotte County, and the energy was amazing, really remarkable, frankly. And it comes down to two things. Ron Stasantax and his extreme attack on a woman's right to choose. Floridians are done with it. We are done with it. And now I want to uh, take a special moment. We have a falling sign. <laughs> Grace, let me uh, help you fix that. So Jesse Correa is with us uh, to my left, uh, and she has her own personal story to tell about how these descent taxes are getting her and her children. Hi, my name is Jesse Correa, and I am now a single mother with six children. Not only am I a survivor of domestic violence, but I am in a place now where I've had the opportunity to totally recreate my life. However, with the increase in rent, I've gone from 1800 to 2200 and I am now facing a 17% increase in my rent. So how do I get a 3% increase when it comes to an annual review, but yet my housing is going to go up 17%. It is extremely difficult as a mom with six kids having to navigate bi-weekly, sustaining a family with about $400. With inflation, with gas, with the fact that I look at what opportunity could I pre create for my family? Do I need another, a part-time job? It takes me away from my children. This is really important. This is affecting our livelihood. So I'm in a place trying to figure out how do I get to provide for my family? I don't want to end up homeless. I've experienced homelessness running away from a man who was abusive from a 20 year marriage. So we're in a place that we get to show up on November the 8th. For Charlie has a plan, a plan that can make affordable housing, guess what, affordable. So we get to show up, we get to vote. This is a man who really cares about the people. This is a man who really is standing up and saying, I am here to hear you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to follow through. It is extremely difficult for me. Even the fact that teachers are lacking in the school. I have a third grader who has not had a consistent teacher every day. It has been substitute teachers every single day. So my son doesn't want to go to school because he gets substitute teachers. He's not learning. We're not understanding the depth of the impact that this is having in our lives right now. And as a single mom, as a hardworking professional woman, I'm trying to figure out how in the world can we have a break? How can Floridians be able to not just exist, but to live, to thrive? to be able to enjoy what this American dream is about. So I encourage you, show up on November the 8th. Let's do this. Let's vote for the one who really is gonna come through and not empty promises and really get Governor DeSantis just out. If any of you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer. Sure. Given the report of the housing, I did notice the well, I think both are. I really do. Um, you know, as we just heard, I mean, it's really affecting uh, real Floridians in a real way, uh, the economic problem. And so we need to address it. The governor is ignoring it. Um, and we need to address a woman's right to choose as well. Uh, you know, I think it's terribly important that we is taking away and stripping our freedoms away every day, a little bit at a time. And with women, it's extreme. Because in the law that he signed, there are not even exceptions for rape or incest. It truly is a barbaric law. It's a war on women. And what he did with these migrants, these Venezuelans, flying them up, you know, to Massachusetts. What is that, a war on Hispanics now? A war on women, war on Hispanics? Who's next? in this DeSantis uh, nightmare. I see in your chart that you really highlight the increase in rent. But here in Orange County, there's going to be a rent stabilization referendum on the ballot in November. We're okay. trying to cap rent for one year to help with the increase in rent here. Some state representatives, most of the Democrats, have been trying to get a special session in Tallahassee. They were unsuccessful under Governor DeSantis. Do you think that that is something that you would be open to? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think it's critically important to do a special session, I'll tell you why. So we have so many Floridians that can't make ends meet right now because of all the things we've outlined here today. Uh, but in addition to that, housing is really the tip of the spear. Uh, whether you want to try to buy a house or rent an apartment in Florida, good luck. I mean, it's so unaffordable, it's, it's ridiculous. And so what has the governor done? Nothing, nothing except try to get elected president in 2024 with all the stunts that he pulls. And so what a governor really would be doing, cared about people, would have a special session on this, restore what is called the Sadowski Housing Trust Fund, hundreds of millions of dollars set aside in order to help our fellow Floridians in a time of need when they're fighting the housing issue that we're all facing right now. But you can also work with our federal friends. The Secretary of HUD is a friend of mine, Marsha Fudge. We served in Congress together. Get help from uh, the federal government as well. And then we can get it from our local government too. And what we do with the local government is work with people like my mayor in St. Petersburg, Ken Welch. He's put aside $70 million to help with housing in St. Petersburg, Florida. That's how you do it, you know. Federal level, the state level, meeting its responsibility, which it is not now because of Governor DeSantis. And the local level too. It's all hands on there. Yes. It's tragic. It's tragic. And um, I've, I've asked the Biden administration to get more engaged. I'm sure that, that they will. Um, you know, the flooding is, is uh, biblical, practically. And uh, I myself am going to go to Puerto Rico on Sunday and survey the situation and see what else additionally we might be able to do to help them out. They're our fellow Americans. We need to fight for them. Well, we hope it doesn't hit, but we have to, you know, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, to, to be smart. Um, make sure that you have a plan. Make sure that you have plenty of food and water. Uh, if you're ordered to evacuate, listen to the uh, order from local authorities. Um, and, and just be prudent and watchful and stay in touch with local weather. What would you say, I know Governor DeSantis has been pretty outspoken when it comes to talking about the increase in the state's reserves and how he believes that the economy here is going in the right direction, they're saving money, they're not spending as much money. What would you say to that? He's a joke. He has no idea what real Floridians are having to deal with. I mean, he hangs out with millionaires and billionaires who fund his campaign. He has no idea what middle-class Floridians are dealing with, working folks. I mean, we've outlined the issues, and they're horrible. There's no compassion. There's no empathy. There's no feeling. I mean, he's not working for the people. He's working for himself. And in the meantime, our property insurance rates skyrocket up. Our utility bills continue to go up. His public service commission that he appoints and is supposed to regulate the utility companies, they're lapdogs instead of watchdogs. It's not doing a damn thing for the people of state. I got Thank a question you for you, sir. Um, when you were governor, did we operate under a deficit or a surplus? Surplus. Mm -hmm. What you. was that number? Well, under DeSantis, we're on a $22 billion surplus. Thank you all for coming out.